Hi, my name is Manke Lavanca. I'm the director of Ski. Ski is a film about a city called Bariloche, and it's a kind of uh, social biography of a territory in the Patagonia of Argentina. Deutscher Verband für das Skilehrwesen. Die ersten Schritte mit Skiern. Mache die ersten Versuche auf einer flachen Piste mit wenig Unebenheiten und festem Schnee. Es ist wichtig, die Skier mit Wachs zu behandeln, um geschmeidig aufsteigen und fahren zu können. Abbiegen. Die ersten Richtungswechsel werden aufrecht stehend ausgeführt. Der Skifahrer oder die Skifahrerin steht in vertikaler Position mit den Skiern parallel zueinander und bewegt dann einen der Skier so, dass er im Spitzenwinkel zum anderen steht. Die Schaufel respektive das Ende zueinander zeigen. Der Aufstieg im Treppenschritt wird hauptsächlich verwendet, um einen steilen Hang und kann mit dem Aufstieg auf einer Leiter verglichen werden. Die unterschiedliche Höhe der Füße erfordert eine Drehung des oberen Körperteils in Richtung des Hangs. Beim Anheben des Knies an der Rückseite müssen die Schier an den Kanten Vor dem Losfahren müssen die Schier horizontal enthalten. Hi, my name is Jan Felix Wuttig and welcome to the 35th Teddy Award. I'm here with Manke Labanka and today I'm gonna talk to him about his feature film debut, Eski. Hey Manke, how are you Hi. doing? Hey. How are you? <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, this is actually the second time you're at the Teddy Award, right? You were here yeah, before. Was, yeah, in 2018 I was before. Yeah. Um, I remember like a really nice experience to meet you guys. Yeah. Well, we're very glad to hear that. Um, actually, um, now you film Eski. It's your it's your feature film debut, right? This, yeah, totally. Yeah. And it actually feels very much like it's it's kind of close to close to your heart i mean it uh it has been filmed and and plays around your hometown of bariloche and um which i guess to to the outside is mostly known for its uh ski facilities um could you maybe tell us what what role the history of bariloche plays in the film yeah bariloche is like the excuse to talk about the idea of neocolonization in a way, mm -hmm. like the extended colonization that the territory of Patagonia has suffered uh, through the last five centuries. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a kind of uh, little bubble where lots of different bubbles start to pop up. Uh, so yeah. I like this kind of this, this starting point, this starting bubble. Okay, yeah. And the, the the way you kind of talk about it, about colonization, and and a couple of other topics is also, um, you you mix different formats. Basically, it's it's kind of documentary at times. It's also very fictional at times. You have sometimes it, it kind of feels like um like a sort of straightforward documentary on the ski developments uh, uh, around Bariloche, and sometimes it feels very much like an experimental horror film. Um, could, <laughs> could you could you tell us a little bit about how that how that kind of came together? Was that your intention from the beginning on, or how did you how did you put all the pieces together? Uh, I mean, I've been working with these uh, kind of eclectic structures, narrative structures, now for a while. Like, it's, they have like a for me like a 
aesthetic pleasure to to work like this, like combining different narratives and styles, and in a way, it gives me the the, the sensation of freedom, and that's something that I really enjoy during the mm -hmm. the writing of this kind of uh, film. Uh, I mean, it's nothing new. It's nothing. Uh, it's something that we are very used to go from one. Mm -hmm. uh, concept to another, to, to, another, to different aesthetics, and I maybe I'm trying to apply this system in, yeah, like you said, like in a very deep uh, story or history because it's related to my my yeah my rising Jose, my childhood and all that stuff. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's you have documentary aspects, you have fictional aspects, but on the whole, it's a very powerful political statement as well right like that's that's what it amounts to um but but actually like one of the aspects that i that i um found very interesting at first was was kind of like the 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 horror film sequences in a sense that you have with the uh the the capa negra um and uh it, it felt very much like what did you have certain like sort of uh, um, influences on those sequences? Something that you want to portray? How did you come together, like with the the the, the black shape in the snow with the skis? No, I mean, uh, in, like an in influence. That's a nice question. I never speak about influence, but I think it's like a kind of maybe Lynch uh, yeah. situation. <laughs> yeah, that's something Very classic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And for me, it's important, like, to to be with these like little bubbles, like these plots that are different between them. Like, I like to experiment the the classicism of these element. Like, there are some kind of, uh, how to say, symbolic elements in the narrative of uh, scary movies that I like to 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 use, and mm -hmm. like something a little bit mathematical, like 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 a mathematical of the montage and the and the progression of the shots yeah. and creating this all this uh, atmosphere for me it's like very funny and in a way the darkness of the territory starts appearing like using these elements so the dark history of the Argentina of Latin America start to emerge with these the use of these uh, very concrete elements yeah I actually felt that that kind of you have those images that are very stylized, like whenever a, a, um, a, a skier comes down a mountain, you know, like in a, in, a, in a downhill fashion, you have those very stylized images. You have very vivid, very stark colors. You have um, very rash cuts as well. It's almost like an 80s sort of aesthetic. Um, yeah. Or like the extreme games and all that kind of uh, narratives. Yeah, yeah. But it's also kind of like sort of interrupted or, or disrupted as well by by the cuts, right? And also yeah. by, by the by the soundtrack, by the by the sound design that you have, by that sort of electronical landscapes yeah. that it, you that you insert into the movie. Um, totally. I, Music is from my uh, Brister and Two. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very very incredible producer it's amazing yeah and I, I i kind of felt that um it was almost like you were trying to like there was some sort of a commercial aesthetic that you were kind of like trying to cut totally. apart you know <laughs> exactly yeah. totally totally like that that's very nice thank you mm -hmm. yeah not just like that yeah mm -hmm. um is this one other thing that I found was was that there is um, a lot of humor to the movie as well. Like, you, for example, you you have that that scene with the three young skiers, which uh, use the area around Bariloche uh, for 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 posing for um, erotic images, right? Um, and what was the idea behind including that? Because it's it's sort of in a way it's very eclipsed from the rest of the movie. There's there's not a lot of um, you know like like a lot of avenues going to that scene or from that scene, but it's very funny as well. It's, it's <laughs> it cracked me up quite a bit when I saw it. Um, what was the idea uh, behind that? When when I uh, start shooting a film, 
I like to create like a register, like to create a moment of my life. And I try to show like the most amount of layers of, of my quotidianity in possible, the, the most possible amount of layers I try to, to show. So even if I go to the place to shoot with a script that has these ideas and suddenly I'm not finding these concepts, I start building up new ones that I really feel that are from that moment. So I went to Bariloche, I meet Moon, one of the characters from this scene, and I meet Dika, and I immediately understand, because I'm not living in Bariloche, and now I was born there, and I go back every, every year during winter or summer. So every time I go back, I meet new people, and these two characters, Moon and Dika, were there, and they were having like them very similar reflections uh, related to sexuality, to way of being, uh, diversity, etc. So for me, it was like, okay, this is part of myself and must be part of, uh, in a way, it's, it's the only moment of the film that shows like the, also like the middle class uh, from Bariloche, like, mm. um, like with some intellectual background and we are related yeah. to photos and, and I, I don't know, it was a way to expose myself for me. It was like, okay, this is also what I am. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to hide. And it's uh, funny because of this, because I'm also funny with my friends and we play around and we take pictures and it's like trying to recreate that kind of uh, situation that it's, part of my quotidianity. Yeah. So, and also the film doesn't use like a archive from my family. I, in a way I like this because it's not a film about the VHS from my mother that was shooting to me or um, I don't know, like archive I found from, from my grandfather. Or, so uh, this moment was uh, an opportunity to create like a new archive also with myself and uh, to keep a record of ideas yeah. that are going around. It felt kind of that way that this was, you had, you had an idea for a movie, but also this was a moment very much in the present where you met those characters and yeah. where you had something to say yeah. for yourself. And you kind of integrated that, that moment into the movie, which on the whole was on some other very strong topics as well. You know? yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, this, this maybe this might might be one of the questions you possibly get asked the most. But uh, y you obviously have a cameo, <laughs> a, what? a cameo like you 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 have taken a role ah. in the film, right? Um, it's my yeah. Maybe it's ask us please. Yeah, uh, uh, I hope this 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 doesn't come across as rude. But <laughs> um, is there <laughs> no, any meaning to to you? quite literally pointing you behind to the audience. <laughs> ah, that. Yeah, I, I love my hairy ass. And <laughs> I think it can be uh, very sexy. Uh, we don't have to discriminate hairy asses, <laughs> please. Yeah, sure. Uh, no, nah, it's something about, yeah, it's like a joke of myself. Mm -hmm. that, um, uh, my friends, everybody knows me like, like like in that way mm -hmm. um, it's something that i really enjoy to, to expose myself and my body and, yeah yeah it's a, it's a sequence I yeah it's, I, it's like uh something that makes you feel more freedom again the word mm -hmm. uh, say maybe there is another better word to use but it's it feels nice yeah to show what it is and i think that certainly comes across it feels like a very very a sequence of freedom in the sense that it's it's funny it's heartfelt there's a sort of strong community be between those characters at the same time you have a little bit of you know the the one character kind of introduces the three of them by kind of saying that that she has talked to her father um and there's there's That's sort of problematic background there but Yeah, and that was nice because uh, it's something that uh, came out like in a, one of the two or three times. The second time we, we met, we started talking about life and what we, we were doing. And Moon told me that recently 
uh, they have talked to to their parents and it was a really nice moment and when the the, mo the, the shooting day was approaching uh, I I told to Moon hey Moon what what do you think about talking about this uh, issue or this uh, stuff that you told me and it was immediately going in, into the script mm -hmm. but it was uh, a, a real experience of day. Mm -hmm. Would uh, Moon like to be referred to by the day pronoun? The day pronoun, yes. Yeah. Non yeah. Okay, I'm sorry that I uh, got it wrong earlier. Um, well, it's, no it's, it's very, yeah, it, it adds a lot of, um, I don't know, positivity and a lot of improvisation to the movie as well. Yeah, I think totally. that's a very, very beautiful part of it. Um, there's also, when it comes to where's improvisation or, or maybe a, um, a planned sort of disruptment, you have that interview with a local man um, about the advantages of the, of the skiing schools. And yeah. what, what you do right there is you kind of build in the bloopers or the, the, the remarks from the shooting yeah. of the film. And it, it makes that documentary feel kind of like very artificial. What, what was your yeah. idea behind including that, kind of breaking down the fourth wall? Well, that was uh, something in a way very simple. It was, okay, this uh, was like this, like we should film, film this shot and it's the only one we have. Um, it was so sincere and we have been before also like talking a lot about uh, Antonio was the one of the first um, Jose uh, one of the first genera generations using this uh, program for ski school like mm -hmm. it's a program for public uh, for pu it's a program from the uh, the municipality of like the government mm -hmm. but was developed by Marcela Ceballos and a partner of her that they built up this program to giving ski at the schools and Antonio was the first one in the of the generation of having one of the the teaching lessons so he has a lot of information about and a lot of experience uh, about talking about the program also because in a way the program changed the life of Antonio it was mm. like a possibility to to um, Uh, to create, like, uh, to find a shop in the ski center and do a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, it was nice, like, the, all the, the talking. And for me, it was nice also to to share, like, the moment that, uh, in a way, we, we were rehearsing and we couldn't do it again. So it was just in the moment, like, saying, hey, do you remember this? Do you remember that? Well, this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, uh, a way to build up and to show, yeah, like, the the behind the scenes of, of documentary filmmakers, but something that usually happens and most of the people try to hide. And yeah. There is something really fake on this hiding. And for <laughs> me, it's, again, like something very beautiful to show the, the manipulation of the, of the language. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end, it's about this. It's like we are creating narratives and what's the problem? I mean, yeah. uh, it's part it of, the, of the process. Yeah, certainly. And if you if you want to talk about the advantages that the whole thing had on on the social system in in Bariloche, then certainly a sort of honesty in the form kind of supports that, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Also, I don't know. It's also it's a like uh, question. I, I I sound very sure about it, but at the same time, it's something that I think a lot about. Mm -hmm. uh, um, always like trying to, to imagine how to show contradiction. For me, filmmaking is about exposing contradictions. And uh, that's the way it's like to, to make a record of the contradiction of the world that could uh, create something different in the future. Mm -hmm. um, concerning that, there's a bit of a turnaround in the, in the second part of the movie um, in which you devote a lot of time to to talk about the uh, Mapuche struggle yeah and uh, the deaths of uh, Rafael uh, Nahuel and Santiago uh, Maldonado um, you also kind of frame it historically by by having that 
sort of I, I don't know like a like a news clipping of uh, General yeah. Roca's uh, desert campaign. Um, maybe yeah. you could tell us a little bit about the the scope and the meaning of the conflict that is that is going on in 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 that area in Barilocho and in, in Patagonia. Yeah, uh, Patagonia was um, populated by Mapuches and Tehuelches uh, from not in, in the south. There are another cultures, but like in the center of Patagonia, in the side of Chile and Argentina. Mapuches and Tehuelches cultures were living there. They were nomads. They were moving around during the seasons, uh, trading um, the stuff. Uh, they had like a, they had they have a very intense philosophy of life related to how how the human uh, is in this world and the connection with. Uh, yeah, other levels of realities. Um, it's always about also like sharing and caring about the the land and the nature. Yeah. Um, and yeah, with the with the start, the beginning of the colonization, like one of the like the most conflictive areas were were these lands that were populated by Mapuches. Uh, they were really um, uh, warriors, and they were like uh, like trying to to stop in a way globalization. And uh, the government in that moment uh, in Buenos Aires decided that, that all that territory should be conquered. Mm -hmm. So they create, they build up a war. That that war was called the the desert the um, uh, the desert war. Mm -hmm. Desert, in a way, like saying, "Hey, there is nothing here. Like yeah. this is a desert." Like the, yeah. the, the concept, the, the first concept was like like that, um, and it was a moment where Argentina was needing um, to to build up uh, the empire and try to get involved in capitalism. And the idea was to bring uh, European immigrants from the wars and bring them to, to work in the land because the tradition of Europe related to the, the working of the land was more important than the, the people living in that area. They were like, uh, some, for me, it sounds very familiar, this, this tale, because it's very obvious, like the whole structure of violence that the territory has mm -hmm. during the years. So they start this war, they, they uh, displace the, the, the cultures, and they kill them like uh, like beasts and the the people that was able to to survive start living in the margins of the big cities uh, one of these big cities was bariloche and uh, they start working in the structure of the capitalism so they work for the for uh, jose for building ships for building uh, houses for the ski center for them, and so, uh, with the uh, in the last uh, the last fifty years, there have been like uh, a lot of uh, how to say conscientization about the um, the blood uh, of the people and the uh, conscientization about the um, how to say. Uh, about the Mapuche uh, culture and the, the Jose when, like, uh, hi, I don't know how to explain, <laughs> like the descendants, the descendants from the Mapuche mm -hmm. are, uh, are trying to to build up again the 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 structure of, of the, their culture. Yeah, yeah. And in that process, one of the main important topics is the land because they want uh, the land that was expropriated pro to them, they want it back. And the land now, it's belonging to a 10 families, like very small amount of rich people. Mm. So in this process, now we're having like a very, uh, um, uh, or again, a very violent process yeah. uh, of neocolonization that, that we have to solve in a way like... Uh, 
there must be a solution in the future because now Chile is struggling with one of the, the, yeah. the worst dictatorships, I mean, in the, in the last 30 years. And it's all related also to, to, that, to this yeah. issue, to this problematic. And I mean, it's something that is just starting. And, um, okay. Um, you also have that, that, um, that phone conversation in there or that at, at the fairly at the end of the, of the film, which is basically about how you cannot, um, keep in a neutral state of mind. Basically, if you, you're either you take a stand or you are an accomplice in a sense. Um, and I, I kind of felt that this this movie is a very like takes a very strong sense uh, uh, takes a very strong stand in the sense that it um, shows kind of a, a self satisfied skiing industry being sort of haunted by Mapuche monsters and yeah. at the same time giving a lot of voice to um, the, the the Mapuche people. And also to the social structures that are sort of away, that are sort of poorer than what you see as a tourist when you probably come to come to uh, Bariloche. Um, was I, I guess the question I have is: Was your film sort of also meant as as an act of rebellion? Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit of a big oh, question, but <laughs> that's a really big question. No, I mean, for me, it was a way to keep a record using narratives and creating uh, like different state of mind uh, and different point of view about a conflict. Like to take the the like. The idea that this film is like, uh, how to say, what was the word that you used? Um, an act of rebellion, you mean? Rebe an act of rebellion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to see art as an act of rebellion. Uh, I don't know if this film was made with that sense, but uh, it was a, an opportunity to me to talk about, yes, this deep, uh, violent history of my hometown, basically. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was not. It was important for me not to, for example, the the legend of uh, El Cuero, the feeder, uh, Lipken Falcon. Uh, it was um, uh, like this um, uh, this creature from the Mapuche culture. It's like a mythological idea uh, of of a monster in the lake. Um, it, it was important for me to narrate it from the point of view that my mother narrated to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to, uh, like, to be narrated like in, in Mapuche language or yeah. it's something that I'm not involved, you know, like, um, I can see from outside and I'm always, uh, thinking about this contradiction, uh, about the, what being raised on, on the lands that, were supposed from other families. Mm -hmm. And my father has a house there and they also earn a piece of land. I mean, uh, a small piece of land with a house. It's, that's also part of the conflict. So yeah. it was important for me not to say, hey, I'm part of this culture. And no, 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 no. It's like from an external way to a different some, uh, ideas of something that I know from, from my childhood. And this was the, the yeah. example there. Um, Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm making it so complicated. <laughs> maybe it's mm, no. I <laughs> I think I understand. Like, there's um, yeah. You need a sort of sensibility to not um, kind of make it a sort of cultural appropriation, right? You need to. Uh, yeah, that was very important for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And maybe I'm doing I'm doing it, but at least I think about it, and it was not my intent. It was it mm -hmm. wasn't my intention. I mean was really from the beginning not to, to to make this but also in that process of not using i have maybe the problem of getting on the contradiction that i'm not stepping in, in i'm not clear with my point of view so yeah. that's the that's the discussion that the marcela the creator of the uh, ski school told, tell me when when she watched the movie mm -hmm. 
it's like uh, something like that. It's like okay, man can um, may sometimes in this process of trying to not uh, to to get away from the from being obvious or, or or go strictly to the to the to the theme or the or the point of the stuff. Maybe you you lose the you lose the way of how things are. Mm -hmm. And so that was a little bit. That's something that I sometimes I feel with uh, some contemporary films and that I really enjoy and I really appreciate and I watch them <laughs> and I love them. But sometimes I feel that maybe they are missing something and people start to to become like objects and I don't know mm -hmm. it's like uh, I, yeah well I, it's I, something that I really, really think every, every time it's like it's on my, in my head like goo -goo 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 -goo. yeah <laughs> something that drives <laughs> you then yeah yeah I, I certainly did feel that that um, that Eski has a, a very balanced sort of point of view a way that that doesn't kind of like go into a depth where it feels forced or anything, but that it tells stories about characters that feel real, even yeah. even though you might not, you know, you might not belong to their culture, but the, the, the film kind of leaves that alone. It just shows, but it shows real characters, like the, the two motorcycle boys who, who go for, for to picking up the skis that certainly felt like a beautiful storyline in and of itself. It, it didn't feel forced. It didn't feel as if I was intruding into some sort of culture right there. Yeah. yeah. Totally. All right. Well, I think that's, that's it for me, for my questions. Um, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for um, sharing this moment with us and, and for devoting your time to us uh, and the interview. Um, well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a pleasure for me also. Thank you. <laughs>